Hey everybody, this is Eric Enga. I am the CEO of Stone Temple Consulting. At least last I checked, I have that title. You never know uh, what happens in corporate America after all. Uh, the board might vote me out. But um, in any case, uh, uh, this is the Digital Marketing Answer Show, aka the DMA Show. And as always, thrilled to have as my co host, Mr. Mark Trapagan. And uh, yes, just want to confirm that the uh, the rumors of the coup uh, turned out to be greatly exaggerated. So, uh, as of now, you still are the CEO of Stone Temple Consulting, and uh, and as far as I know, I'm still the senior director of online marketing of Stone Temple Consulting. So, with with that vote of confidence, let's begin the show. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, no, I was actually uh, fretting that uh, you know with uh, Vic uh, Gondotra leaving that uh, that I was next, but uh, uh, <laughs> evidently not. So. Um, you never know how that, that you know stuff tends to roll downhill, as they say. But uh, anyway, uh, we're going to try to have some fun on today's show. Uh, well, actually, we actually try to do that every uh, time. Um, and uh, but today we're going to be talking about different Google search features. Uh, and because we're going to be talking about a lot of different features, uh, don't expect us to go down to the nitty gritty on every single one. We couldn't possibly do that on. A single show, but what we really want to do is create a sense of the whole Google landscape for you, and then in various follow-on shows, um, we're you know we're, we're going to take uh, individual one of these things and go deeper uh, with them. But Mark, you have a great graphic to share, I think, which might be a, a, a cool way to start the show. Yeah, let me uh, let me grab that here. Uh, the old screen share. So this is a great and visualization put together by uh, Pete Myers, I believe, right? That's correct. Uh, Dr. Pete Myers, as we know him at, at Moz, did this back in October of last year. And it is, uh, let me switch my, my window to it so I can scroll it for you. Uh, but, it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Whoop, uh, wrong one. Uh, hmm. There we go. So what this is, he put together in one huge graphic uh, at least as of October of last year, all the kind of special features that can show up now in Google search. So, you know, most of us now that look at search on a regular basis realize it's been a long time since Google was just those 10 blue links, as we always used to talk about. Uh, there's, you know, so much more now there. So just scrolling through this, you see like a, a local review carousel at the top. We see uh, Google Play Music showing there. We see, of course, ads. Uh, we've seen those for a long time. Um, shopping, uh, Google Shopping highlights uh, for all kinds of different things. Here he seems rather obsessed with Taco Bell. Uh, you know, and if you've seen, <laughs> if you've seen Pete, he's a skinny guy. I don't know how he. Uh, I guess he goes there, as we can see uh, on the screen. He goes for the 156 calorie uh, Taco Bell. So he's he's that's why he stays in good shape. Uh, the you know knowledge panel results, branded results for Google Plus page for Taco Bell. You know, I'm just gonna I'm not gonna call off all of these. Obviously, just kind of scroll through here. But you can see I'm scrolling and scrolling, and each one of these is a different special feature. There's in-depth articles, a uh, different special feature that's been built into uh, to search in the recent years. Uh, and you know, they, depending on the query and depending on you, uh, particularly if you're logged in, uh, different ones of those may or may not show up. But the main point here again is that you know it's not just those 10 blue links anymore. There's all kinds of ways that Google is displaying information to us these days. And that means that, uh, and this is, I think, probably what a lot of what we're going to be talking about, that uh, just doing the traditional, you know, optimizing to try to get to the top of those keywords for the 10 blue links is not all that we should be thinking about in search anymore. That's right, Eric? Uh, no, that's absolutely right. And I think one of the big things uh, to realize is that um, the process of ranking in those other types of results, for the most part, is different, right? So there are different elements involved. And let me just highlight uh, with a couple of examples. Uh, one is not too long ago, I did a, uh, a, an actually in-depth show on the DME show, the Thursday show, uh, with uh, Dave Rodecker uh, on local search. And Mark, I believe you published a, a great uh, uh, summary of that as a blog post uh, on uh, Stone Temple uh, just earlier today, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, people uh, can find that on you know, stonetemple.com slash blog or in uh, Stone Temple Consulting's Google Plus stream from today. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but uh, in local search, the things that are ranking factors uh, are actually quite different. And I'm just going to highlight one of them uh, for now, which is that uh, what, you, what you need to do is you need to make sure that your data about your business, what you call your name, your address, and your phone num number, people call it your NAP information, um, and hopefully, ideally, some supporting information is shown the same way on every local business listing portal um, of significance, uh, you know, pretty much everywhere. Oh, I got your blue box. That's why uh, I got a. Oops, oh. there we go. Now you can okay. see me. Sorry about oh. that, folks. Good, good thing uh, I didn't take that moment I, to clean my nose. Uh, yeah, well, it's a good thing. Um, I had you blue box because of the image and little HOA uh, management error on my part there, folks. Sorry about that. But um, so you, that's a real process to make that data consistent across every, you know, we're talking yellowpages.com, super pages, city search. Uh, there, there's many of these different uh, uh, portals. And to get everything consistent across all of those is a big deal. Yet it's a very big ranking factor. And just to uh, just I'm going to go just a little bit deeper on that. The reason why it's such a big deal in local search is if Google sees multiple different kinds of phone numbers, say for one of your locations, uh, or slightly different address information, they lose confidence that the information is accurate. And they don't actually want to have a situation where a user sees something in Google search results, they call that phone number and it's a wrong number. Or worse still, they drive to that address and the business has moved. Um, so this data consistency is a really big deal in local search. Um, another thing worth mentioning is, for example, with video, right? Uh, if you publish a video, well, Google can't really very effectively see what's inside the video. So once again, there's a, you know, different considerations that can come into play into how you, uh, uh, how you might uh, optimize your video, uh, one of which is if you have lots of videos that you're putting on your site, then having a video site map becomes a big deal. So that's really the first level of ro uh, realization to me is that um, each of these features has different kinds of uh, optimization things that you have to do to make them go. Yeah, I'm going to break in just for a moment here to remind folks that this is the Digital Marketing Answers Show, which means uh, the answers come from your questions. So I want to invite you to be asking questions. Remember, we're focusing today on the special features of Google Search. Uh, beyond the 10 blue links, the, the kinds of things that you see coming up these days you know, in, in search and how that impacts your business, uh, how you can be taking advantage of those, where you can, uh, what you should be doing to be more engaged with those and how those might impact your business. So just, just breaking on that. Uh, another uh, one that we could talk about, Eric, is, uh, is the Google product ads. Uh, and they keep changing the names. You know, it's Google, so every, every three months they change the name of, of things. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'll confess that I'm not as up on that as I used to be. I, I used to uh, do a lot more advertising managing uh, within the Google Ad platform, and part of that responsibility was dealing with Google product listings and Google product ads and things like that. And I know there's been some recent changes uh, in that. Are you uh, maybe more aware of that than I am? How that's working now? Oh, well done, Mark. Without checking in advance, you're going to just toss something in my direction and see if I can. <laughs> it's a, yeah, this is the part of our show that we call Stump Eric. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Uh, so uh, this question from the former senior... Oh, sorry. Um, so um, it looks like, by the way, our video is frozen here, so I sure hope it's recording. Um, so we, we'll find out. Uh, I'm still showing live. But, uh, but I'm going to uh, field the question anyway on the hope okay. that YouTube squares it away here shortly. Um, and that is that um, I'm not up to date with the latest changes, Mark, but I do know that one of the biggest things that matters in product listing ads uh, actually goes back to the same thing, is uh, data accuracy is once again a big deal. Uh, so, uh, you know, for example, if something's out of stock and Google wants you to pull the ad, uh, um, they want the picture and the pricing to be accurate, and it's really important to to get things uh, up to date. Uh, 
you know, on a regular basis um, and, and keep it up to date and, and refresh it as things change on, on your end. Um, so that ends up being a pretty important factor in product listing ads. So that's the uh, that's the way uh, uh, that piece works. There's there's more detail to that than uh, than I uh, know. I'm afraid. Yeah, I'm just I'm sorry. Um, trying to drop a comment in the main uh, event to let people know that we hear them that we don't know quite what to do about the video being stopped. Um, yeah, it's not us. Uh, yeah. That's the key thing. Uh, uh, Mark and I are still seeing each other just fine, um, assuming it's a YouTube problem. So um, hopefully it will uh, uh, continue very shortly. In fact, the viewers are coming back up, Mark. So it looks like oh, okay, like, like we're good to go. So All for right. those of you who have just returned to seeing live video, um, we did uh, keep presenting with just some brief commentary on the video being out. I assume it's a YouTube problem of some sort because everything was uh, still working fine here. But we did uh, talk about uh, uh, product search there for a bit. You can catch that on the on the replay. Yeah, I think the main thing to say there is that if that's if that's an area, if you, especially if you run an e-commerce type of site, that's something you'll just you'll want to educate yourself about. Google has many resources uh, to learn about that. So uh, probably enough said just to you know educate yourself about how that works. See if that's something that you, you know, a marketplace that you want to be involved in. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Uh, uh, and then we have another huge one. Uh, and by the way, folks, we're going to um, use your questions to guide where we choose to go a little bit uh, deeper. Um, and, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, we're going to keep talking about things at a high level and try to create the landscape for you. But, um, uh, Another huge area is the knowledge graph, right? We we talk mm -hmm. a lot about that, and um, uh, you know that's uh, uh, it, it's kind of interesting because uh, you know part of that is just you know they're just facts. You know what's the what's the capital of you know Washington State? Uh, well, uh, Seattle. Uh, um, you know that kind of thing is uh, um, you know. Uh, just, just, yeah. It's actually Olympia, and that's why you're not running the knowledge graph there. Uh, well, that's right. So I was, I was uh, hoping that someone would catch that. But, uh, <laughs> um, uh, but uh, uh, okay, so then uh, let's see. What's the capital of Washington, D.C.? I bet you can't get that one. Oh, um, man, that's a stumper. I used to know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, uh, but in any case, um, the the uh, the point of all this is some some things are just facts, especially if you give the facts correctly, um, and there isn't a lot about that you could do about becoming a fact, so to speak. You know, what's the population of the United States? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, uh, how many football teams are there in the NFL? Um, you know, these are they're just answers to those questions, um, but um, there are other things that can happen. Uh, so, for example, if your business uh, uh, develops enough authority, um, you can actually get into situations where they start pulling data from you. I know this happened recently to uh, uh, the folks at Mods, right? They started right, yeah. stuff happen. What, what were the details of that, Mark? Well, that it was interesting because interesting because it happened right during uh, I believe it was SMX West, which which you were at. Uh, I remember uh, Jen. Uh, I just know her, dear Jen. I can't. Her, her last name is escaping at the moment. The community manager at Moz. Um, Jennifer Sable Lopez. You mean? Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I feel horrible for forgetting her last name. Uh, yeah, Jen, Jen uh, Lopez um, tweeted out, you know, something to the effect of like, uh, you know, gee, thanks a lot for scraping us, uh, Google or something like that. And she had a had a picture attached to the tweet that was screen cap of the uh, what people are now calling the instant answer feature of the knowledge graph where uh, if you type in a query that's just looking for a quick piece of information and it's gonna, I'm trying to remember what the, the query was it was something about um, Moz has a uh, an extensive glossary on their site and it was, it was something some kind of you know search feature or something like that they, what is this and they brought up in a little box at the top of the search the answer from Moz now when it does that when it does take it from another site they do put a link at the bottom to that site, 
but it, it set off a big discussion at the time because the first kind of maybe the knee-jerk reaction was, you know, this is unfair. Google's scraping from your site instead of sending people to your site directly for the answer. They're putting the answer there, so nobody has to click through. And after that kind of calmed down, somebody, I think it was Cyrus Shepard, no, Cyrus Shepard came back and commented and said, well, you know what? It's going to be somebody that they're going to put up there. I'd much rather have it be Moz named on that box than, than a competitor. Because Absolutely. what does that say? It links back to what you just said. They're only going to draw those answers from sites that they have a high degree of trust in. So in a, you know, in a maybe backhanded compliment kind of way, even though they are, in a sense, scraping from your site and stealing a, a page view from you, a potential page view, they're also at the same time endorsing your brand. It's like Google saying, like, this is, you know, this is a great place for answers about that. So, you know, it's a, it's a trade-off. It might be a, an actually a branding advantage as opposed to a, a traffic advantage. Yeah, well, and I think that branding advantage is something you can't overlook. So if you were actually trying to sculpt your uh, strategy to get to a point where you started getting pulled into the, uh, um, uh, the knowledge graph, you could uh, basically try to do that. But basically, you know, what are you trying to do there? Well, okay, you're trying to be seen as totally authoritative, right? Yeah. Um, and you, got, you know, if it's what Google's going to do, you could you could spend all your time complaining about it, or you could say like, my goal should be to become a site that's so trusted that Google would steal from me. <laughs> now, you know, I'm being silly there, but this thing like you know, because we normally think of scraping, right? You know, it is scraping. It's taking scraping is when you copy information off of a site and put it on another site uh, without permission. And in, in essence, that's what Google's doing here. I'm not saying it's illegal, uh, or may, I'm not even saying it's a bad thing, but you know that's that's what it is. But in the case of where it's Google doing it, you know, you might decide like like Cyrus Shepard said, you know, I should take it as a compliment. I want to be that site that's so trusted that Google would put my answer right in front of people without uh, reservation. Yes, indeed. So um, we're still having video tr troubles, by the way. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, well, not much we can do about it. it looks yep. like it's on the YouTube side, so that happens. Yes, indeed. Okay, so um, I'm going to take one of the questions uh, uh, from uh, Chris, uh, Chris <laughs> Cloutier. Um, and here we go. Is it true that using name, address, phone number in different places on the web can act as a link for social businesses? Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, so um, I, I'm, I'm going to reframe the question slightly, Chris, and hopefully I'm going to still be on point with you here. Um, so having what we call mentions for your business across the web uh, uh, does really behave a bit like a link in normal rankings, right? So more mentions for your business across the web um, does actually have a positive effect on your local search rankings. All right, and uh, that's uh, um, uh, you know a, a, a really key part of local search. The other thing that we haven't mentioned for local search, just to hit the other uh, big hitter, if you will, um, is uh, reviews. Uh, mm -hmm. Having reviews for your business. Very interesting factoid, by the way. Um, uh, some data that I've seen shows that having bad reviews for your business is better than having no reviews for your business. Doesn't sound very intuitive now, does it, Mark? Yeah, but yeah no. You, you think you want to avoid bad reviews, but yeah, every study I've seen uh, reflects that. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So it's really, really important to think about uh, getting people to, to review your business. Of course, we, we all have this desire to have nothing but positive reviews, right? So nobody's going to go out and recruit a bunch of bad reviews because of the uh, information that we just shared. But you have to be really careful that you don't oversteer this process, right? Uh, you could, you know, go through this effort to uh, make sure that you got only good reviews written up for you. Uh, and and uh, uh, But if you oversteer that process, that's not what Google wants, and and of course you're gonna uh, um, 
say to me, well, uh, um, how would Google ever know? And, you know, chances are pretty good that they wouldn't know, but, um, but you can't really totally count on it. Remember um, uh, the, 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 the point is that um, somebody could turn you in, right? I mean, any number of things can happen. Um, and and well, maybe there's also there's also good evidence out there, and there's been some good articles written about this that um, that review sites such as Google and Yelp do use and employ a certain amount of algorithmic pattern watching. They they have you know watched because they, they again remember, they, they get billions of these points of data, so after a while they begin to see patterns when when they do detect a real spammer, somebody spamming the reviews or manipulating the reviews. There are often certain patterns that emerge, and they can use those to flag uh, businesses that may be manipulating the reviews. We know Yelp does that, uh, and so it's very likely that Google does it as well. Yes, indeed. Um, uh, one more thing, just about the. Oh. Go ahead. Sorry, I just want to just reinforce about the, uh, the the first part of the question about um, citations or mentions on the web for for local listings. Uh, again, in that, that article, that uh, interview for the DME show with Dave Rodecker of Local Splash that we referenced earlier, uh, that's you know, it's on our blog today at Stone Temple Consulting, uh, that's something that he uh, was very strong about, that you know, they see high, high correlation between the number of citations or mentions that you have across the web, that it, you know, and especially if those match up well, if they have specific information about your business that matches up with the information on your site, that that can really help uh, local rankings. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, a somewhat unrelated point, but it just reminded me of it for for some reason. That uh, uh, I remember, I think it was Zappos that I learned at one point was going through uh, uh, reviews that they had uh, received uh, and fixing typos and grammatical errors. Um, uh, and uh, because they saw that that actually impacted the, um, uh, you know, the, um, the the value of the reviews and the way people were responding to them. It was actually uh, more important to them uh, to have correctly grammatical ones and, and positive ones, the related thing. All right, I'm going to throw up your comment. Do you ever have a Google Places listing if you have a virtual business? Um, so um, it, you don't have a brick and mortar business. So if you have a um, uh, a service area, I know you can do that. Um, uh, and so a classic example is a plumber where you don't have an office, but you have an area that you service. So that's something that you can do, and you can uh, travel around. You know, you can. Are you willing to drive 100 miles or 200 miles or What's the distance, and you can specify that. So uh, uh, Google does provide a way to do that. I don't know that they provide a way to um, actually help you if you if you're just purely online and there's no physical aspect. Yeah, I, I don't think so, uh, and that be partly because that, uh, in their judgments, their judgments, their product is not what uh, local in places is about. Uh, they want that to be about. Primarily, a you know actual brick and mortar uh, business where people go and can do business with you. That it's you know that it has meaning that it's in a it's in a certain location. Um, a virtual business, even though it might be aimed at a certain locale, uh, it you know it doesn't. But I think there's other ways that you can optimize a virtual business for local search, other than the local listing. Uh, again, referring back to uh, Dave Rodecker. And that article is just real fresh in my mind since I, you know, rewrote it last night. Uh, you know, he, he talks about how, um, you know, just making sure that your site, I'm not talking about keyword stuffing here, but make sure, making sure that your your site is very clear and, and describes everywhere that it makes sense to, um, that it's about this location. It's about this place. You know, we serve the Denver, Colorado area, and you know, mention that a lot. That it can make it. It may not show up in the what we think of as the local results, like the, the seven pack or the carousel across the top, but it will make it more likely to show up when people search with a clear intent for local 
when they're looking for your kind of business in Denver, Colorado. So that's just a little tip on that. And we have a request from Christopher Vogelman. We all need to help him with this request. <laughs> yeah. All right, just kidding you, Christopher. But you have to be careful what you put in the comment stream. Yeah, we'll help you out with that, Chris. <laughs> we might just comply with your request. So, um, Okay, great. So um, another question from uh, Denver Profit Jr. here. Have you tested with a client the number of check-ins with G+, to the local business as well as the Facebook local biz check-ins. I think he means have we tested whether that affects rankings. Local yes, rankings. I'm assuming that's the case. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and unfortunately, uh, not something that I've personally been involved in testing. I know we've done some uh, uh, testing here uh, um, at the company, but I'm not privy to to what we've found with that. So. We'll get back to you on, on that one, uh, uh, Denver. So, um, okay, great. So another one. Uh, what about uh, from Kevin Pauly here? Seen any benefits to qualifying, verifying your business and personal social media accounts by linking to them on Freebase? Oh yeah. So definitely, uh, Freebase is something that uh, Google makes use of. Um, uh, and uh, uh, you know, getting data into Freebase is a very useful thing to do. And uh -huh. very, very difficult. Uh, Freebase is is not for the faint of heart. You know, I, I've taken a little bit of a look at it. Um, it's uh, you know, just for people who may not know, Free, Freebase is a an entity database that uh, that Google uh, is involved with and uses. Uh, and by entity database, I mean it's it's designed to be a place where um, you know people, places, things, the things we think of as entities in semantic search, can uh, can be identified, and the connections between them can be identified. Um, but it's it's like Wikipedia on steroids. You know, if you've ever been involved with editing a Wikipedia article, you know that's not very intuitive in itself. You have to learn a whole different kind of way of editing a wiki. But Freebase is a whole other animal. Um, and I know uh, I've been goading, a AJ Cohn uh, is really good at it, understands it, and he keeps saying, you know, someday he's going to write a tutorial on it or do, a, you know, do something on it. I keep goading him to do that. But um, suffice it to say, anyway, that you know, the, Google is, is trying to look for these. Uh, so it's good to be listed there if you can be. It's good to be listed in Wikipedia uh, you know, as a business or a person. Uh, you can, all these things give more confidence to Google uh, about who you are and what you should be connected to. Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to take one more local question and then uh, we'll, we'll uh, well, we'll take however many more come in, but I have, uh, <laughs> I plan to uh, uh, switch uh, gears a little bit after okay. this one. Um, so best recommendations for handling a situation where business is both virtual and local. So what I would say there is that you want to um, uh, you basically you should do still do your local listing stuff the, the, the same way, right? Mm -hmm. And you should still have a web page uh, which is uh, somewhere on your site, uh, which is very much uh, optimized for that local location um, to help feed the, the local search beast. But um, uh, you know, in terms of the virtual part, um, you know, sort of the normal guidelines for how you would put a website together uh, apply, right? You you uh, need to have uh, you know good titles and um, the recent article I published somewhere. I don't remember where it was, Mark. You can help me remember on uh, golden rules for title tags. Um, that's I think it was Search Engine Watch. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's the problem with having too many places where you publish stuff. Um, but uh, um, uh, you, you know, you want to do really smart things with your site architecture, the same that you would do with any website. Those those rules still all apply. Uh, so that part I, I wouldn't actually view as being any different, uh, David. But uh, um, but then you got to make sure that you do also turn around and address the uh, the, the local search side of things. And I would add from the Google Plus side that you, you can have 
both a Google Plus brand page, which would be related to your virtual side, to your website, and you would uh, verify the link that using rel equals publisher, uh, the two-way linkage, uh, and a local page. Uh, so you can go into places and set up Google Places for Business, you know, set up your, claim your local page, get it verified uh, through the, the normal process where these days they send you a postcard to the listed address for your business. When you get the postcard, it has a PIN number on it. You go back to places, you enter the PIN number, and that verifies your local page. Once that's done, if everything matches up well, if, the, you know, if all the information matches, Google will give you the opportunity to merge that local page with your brand page. And what happens at that point is both uh, still are in action. So you're getting a you know, verified local listing with Google and a verified virtual listing. And you can actually, and I've seen this, you can have a double knowledge panel result even when, when there's a localized result. So when, um, when I search for businesses that have done that here in the Raleigh-Durham area, I'll sometimes see uh, you know, two knowledge panel results on the side of search. I'll see their, their Google Plus brand page showing their latest post and things like that and where I can follow them. And right under that will be the knowledge panel box showing the map for their, uh, their local listing. So you can do both of those. Yeah, no, that's, uh, uh, that's awesome. So lots of great stuff you can do. And by the way, uh, for consulting help on freebasing, uh, as Christopher Vogelman suggests, just ask Richard Pryor. Um, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Again, not any not advice from Christopher Bogelman that we're actually endorsing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. Uh, right, uh, and make sure your hair is short when you do that. Uh, okay, um, so uh, let's uh, see if we can uh, get some questions going on uh, uh, something other than local search. Uh, uh, I am uh, I do actually have one more local one, but. Uh, uh, audience, if you can shift your brain to some other aspects of search, uh, that would be great because I want to make sure we touch base on a few things. We're trying to paint the, the high-level picture across a number of things today. And I do, uh, I do. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I do have some other questions other than local. Uh, if you if you don't if you miss them, I got. Uh, some. Yeah, I've got a couple, but I'm going to take uh, one more uh, uh, since it's here. Uh, Foursquare and Facebook uh, check-ins have any impact on Google search rankings? Um, not as far as I know, um, and to my knowledge, Google doesn't actually have any access to that data. Yeah, I think that's that's accurate as far as we know. Yeah, so um, uh, it's just one of those things they can't actually get at it uh, in any meaningful way. Okay, so... Um, um, fair enough. Uh, do you want to pull up a, a non-local search question? Yeah, I'm going to pull up uh, Amon Johns here saying, like, it, I choose a different location for every hangout. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's the bill collectors, Ammon. I'm always one step ahead of them. Always one step ahead of the bill collectors. Yeah, uh, and by the way, uh, Ammon is the reason why I always check the box that viewers have to be 18 or older. Um, <laughs> for the record. Um, but... Uh, uh, that's there. You didn't think I was going to get at you today, did you, Aaron? But you were wrong. Um, uh, here's, so, I, I, okay, uh, I have a serious question. If you, okay, good. All right. This is from uh, Susan Finch. Back a while ago, she asked, how much of an effect does having a Wikipedia entry help your rankings to create the nice picture when people search for you or your brand off to the right in results? And you know, I want to say right away that um, I mean, it has a kind of very direct effect. If you, if you have a Wikipedia listing, and people search for your name, uh, and Google has high confidence that the name they're searching for is probably you, they will very often show that uh, Wikipedia, you know, you're, they'll grab your profile, your picture from Wikipedia, your name, a little bit of the bio information, and put it in that knowledge panel box to the right. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot that, that can be said about having a Wikipedia uh, entry. I mean, just the presence of that there is already branding, and that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, whether it shows up on the right or just you know uh, in the regular blue links, it will have an impact on searchers. Can impact click-through rate on your results. Uh, might uh, well impact how people engage with your web page when they get there. Uh, one way or another, 
um, you know, um, uh, those effects that I'm describing now wouldn't necessarily be a direct ranking factor, but they can actually indirectly impact ranking in a meaningful way. Yeah. People will just engage with you differently at that point. Some, some quick advice on, on Wikipedia, just from my own experience. Uh, it's easier to get your business into Wikipedia than yourself as a person. Uh, because a business is pretty easy to prove that it's a real thing, uh, that it's, that it's a, you know, it has some kind of importance to it. It doesn't mean it will be easy, but you can. Uh, another little tip is that uh, the editors in, within Wikipedia um, tend to be uh, very guarding of their communities and their pages that they watch over. Uh, one of the tenets of Wikipedia is that you're not supposed to write about yourself. You're not supposed to do your own entry. Uh, an entry is supposed to be created by someone else. Uh, now, you know, again, like we said earlier with Google, it's like, well, how would they know? Um, you don't want to perhaps risk getting your entry taken down if they discover that you are connected with the company. Um, so uh, you might want to hire somebody, or if you have a friend or somebody who knows how to do it, who's experienced Wikipedia uh, editor, uh, creator, you know, have them create the entry for you. Uh, just because you put it there, it's not automatic. Uh, it has to be subject to editorial review. And uh, from the personal level, it's even harder. You do have to have some level of notoriety. Uh, and that's arbitrary. It depends on the editor you get. Um, I can tell you personally, we, we tried with me last year. We tried, just as an experiment, we tried to see if we'd get me into Wikipedia. Uh, my friend Phil Buckley uh, created a very careful entry. He put as many citations in it as he could. Um, but uh, by the time he, he hit you know, submit on it. Uh, he drove home. He got about a 45-minute commute home. By the time he got home and turned on his laptop, the editor had already said, like, nope, not famous enough. Uh, that was, that, you know, kind of deflated my day. Um, but typically things like, you know, if you've written a book, uh, that can be a very good flag. And if you've been on, uh, unfortunately, you know, it's still often linked to, like, real traditional media. You know, if you can show, like, you've been on a real television interview show or Things like that, you know, that you can, where you can, somebody can cite about you that you have some prominence in the real world. Yeah, no, absolutely, and it's really great advice, and uh, um, it, it's uh, you know, do it with great care because the um, you know if you're really pushing to get yourself or your company listed in there and they disagree, and um, you know, there's humans on that side too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you can't forget the human equation in any of these things, and uh, you know that might actually uh, impair your chances of getting in there at a later date. And um, you know, depending on 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 the circumstances, it might raise the bar for you at a later date. Uh, for example, Mark right now won't be able to get in until he becomes president in the United States. Yeah, that's um, they, that's what they told me now. Like they, you know, because I tried that once. Now I've got to be at least uh, at least president. Possibly dictator of the world before I'll get it. Yeah, uh, I, I was saying I was thinking king, but I guess dictator will have to um, uh, to to work. So um, yeah, so um, great. Um, and then um, uh, okay, we have a carousel question here from Tim yep. Sweeney. Is there a prioritization from Google side so whether or not the carol carousel will show? versus uh, a product listing ads or shopping ads versus neither. Note, I did see an article mentioning shopping ads appearing as part of the carousel, too. Yes. Okay. So, Do you have a thought on that? Uh, uh, the thought on that is I, I haven't seen anybody that has quite figured out what the prioritization level is, what triggers one or the other. Uh, part of that is because Google is doing a lot of experimenting with it. So it can change from day to day. You know, what made the carousel show up? Uh, and the carousel, just in case people uh, don't know what we're referring to, uh, is that uh, occasionally you'll see across the top of the listings a, a, a black strip. It's like a black uh, film strip with a number of images in a row. And uh, where you most frequently see that is, is in local results, uh, especially local results that have reviews. So you'll see those, those images across the top. Uh, but we have seen them experimenting with showing product listing ads in that in that carousel across the top. Um, but you, you know, if you have if you have you participate in Google product listings, it can show up there. It can show up uh, within the results itself. It can show up in the sidebar. 
you know, they, they experiment with all kinds of different things. But yeah, there it is. There's the Eric showing it now. Yeah, restaurants near Marlboro, Mass, which is not where I am, by the way, but that's beside the point. And all these, uh, this, this is what they call the carousel. In fact, uh, if I click on this little arrow over here, it moves. Which is why they call it the carousel, right? Yeah. The, that just, just could be, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, uh, um, uh, that's that. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe somebody you know that's in the event will uh, be able to link to something or tell us something about that. But I I haven't seen any successful testing of you know th of knowledge of of what exactly triggers which of those. Yeah. Excellent. So what should we take on next here? How about uh, since I I don't see I don't have any questions in my uh, in my uh, cache at the moment. Uh, what about uh, in-depth articles? Oh, that's a very cool one. So uh, you want to pull up an example, and I'll start the conversation. Okay. Yep. I'll get one. Um, so in-depth articles, uh, as uh, Mark will show you shortly, um, it shows up at the bottom of the search results, uh, and it's a uh, um, basically um, articles that provide really kind of comprehensive and in-depth information, hence the name. When Google announced this, uh, here, we're gonna, I think well, we have... I'm gonna, let me get to it here. Um, oh, oh, you so jumped ahead. the gun on me. Okay. okay, so when Google announced this, uh, they uh, basically um, uh, told okay. us that 10% um, of a, daily, a user's daily information needs is for more comprehensive information. And um, do you have it up? It's up the upper left of the share screen now. Okay, right? there you go. Deep inside Taco Bell's Doritos. Okay, yeah, and we got to talk to Dr. Pete about this uh, taco. Obsession. But um, uh, in in any case, um, the the idea is that these uh, um, these are longer form articles, right? And if you look carefully at this, you're going to see we get Fast Company, and then it lists by Austin Carr here, which is interesting. Uh, and then you have New York Times, and then you have GuernicaMag.com. Uh, and uh, when Google first came out with this, it created this great uh, outcry from everybody that, you know, author rank is here. Uh, but uh, the early data seemed to show only very authoritative websites. Uh, and... Um, uh, so it seemed to be more related to uh, something like a, um, a publisher rank uh, thing. But this thing with Austin Carr is pretty interesting. Do you want to talk about that, Mark? Yeah, we do see that occasionally. Uh, that you know, Because they said when they first introduced the in-depth articles, they did put out a blog post and they said, if you want to qualify for it, here's things that you should do. Uh, you know, Carefully is always saying that none of these guarantee that you'll show up in in-depth articles. But you know, if you want to have a chance at it, you should do as many or all of these if you can. Uh, you know, one was uh, having your having a Google Plus brand page, having it hooked up with the Rel equals publisher. Um, but they did mention using Google authorship. And uh, more recently, uh, as many people may be aware, uh, I got a tweet from directly from Matt Cutts when uh, when I was sharing something from SMX West where I let Sing the or Singal the uh, uh, architect of Google search uh, algorithms, um, you know, had had nodded in agreement with Danny Sullivan, who said from the stage that you're not using author rank yet. And so you know, I said, just quoting, you know, see, no author rank is what I've been saying. And Matt Cutts tweeted back, you know, well, you know, yeah, but we might use it for some things, like for example, in-depth articles. And you know, I don't think he was saying that we're ranking authors uh, or we're using authors to rank items in search because in-depth articles is not really a ranking uh, factor but it's saying that there could be a qualification that if you're a, uh, a well-known author uh, who has a good reputation like apparently Austin Carr is that that might be an additional factor that helps get your article into in-depth articles and they even occasionally not very often but occasionally will show that author attribution as we see in that result there. Yeah, and then just as a related note, uh, 
from Amon Johns, which is I think is a good uh, comment. Uh, publisher isn't, uh, and what he means here is rel publisher, that rel publisher tag isn't as useful to Google so far as the publisher is usually the site and Google already ranks the authority and trust of sites. So just to, to take that full circle. Yeah, I, mean, I, I just want to say I, I, I agree with that fundamentally. I think, and this is, this is just my personal speculation, you know, by the fact that Google seems to want to uh, encourage brands to be using Rel equals Publisher and to be hooking up to verifying their brand pages uh, with their sites, you might know, ask why are they doing that. And I think that it is meant to be in play uh, down the line that uh, they want to be able to in the future, you know, they, yes, they know already who the authoritative brands are out there, the big ones, uh, and the ones that have already gained trust and authority. I think they may want to in the future be able to go deeper and say, you know, let's get, if we had even more data, maybe, maybe there's smaller brands out there that we don't know about yet, but that um, deserve some attention, that, you know, people are, in, are showing some interest around. I think that the Rel Equal Publisher connection might be meant to try to surface the those uh, at some point in the future, just as in the future they've said, and I, I've talked with a Google representative, Google Plus representative, uh, not too many months ago about in-depth articles, you know, he said to me, yes, we still intend to someday be showing smaller publishers in that, so don't, don't give up, uh, but it's obviously not happening any too quickly. We're still seeing mostly just big publishers. Right. Well, of course, the other thing is it does is it... Uh, uh, helps eliminate the doubt of a link between the uh, uh, Google Plus page and the, uh, um, uh, the publisher site, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of those things we've talked several times in the show today about how important it is uh, that Google have 100% confidence in data. Certainly it impacts lo local search. Uh, we talked about it in the context of product listing ads. I mean, Google is really good at getting this stuff uh, right to a very high degree, a high, very high percentage of the time, but any time they can implement something that eliminates some doubt in some specific situations, that has a lot of uh, value uh, to them to be able to do that. So remove that element of doubt whenever you can. Um, uh, so um, that's just a good thing to, to think about in general. Can I uh, before we move off of in-depth articles, can I throw up a question from uh, Denver Profit uh, related to that? We're going to see whether you can throw it up. Go ahead, try. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not going to throw up. Okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> the, um, Denver asked, uh, the recipe for in-depth article flagging from Google, what parts of site architecture are required from the article page? And the uh, Denver, the main one that they told us uh, is uh, that can be helpful to them is to have um, the uh, help me out here, Eric. It's the uh, it's it's a schema, uh, schema uh, tag for article. Rel equals oh. um, content site content uh, content type. The uh, the content type rel tag set to article uh, is you know is something that they specifically said could be helpful. I don't think any, I don't think there's anything else on the site side that you need to do or that you can do, other than that the article should be, um, you know, uh, in depth. <laughs> it, you know, it's not going to be a 300 word article. Uh, some people have tried to early on. There was some you know testing and thing like some, some people thought there was like an optimum amount of words. And what I've seen since then is that you know that has not panned out. That uh, you know while it, they all are longer articles, there's no set discernible. Uh, golden length that, that qualifies you. Yeah, although um, they had a, a more general uh, uh, markup strategy that was recommended by people too, right? To more clearly, uh, like you could use the data highlighter tool from Google to highlight what were your title tags versus the body section of the, of the site and things like that, you know, sure. where the author name was and uh, things like that. Um, uh, I don't know that that plays into in-depth articles at this point, but it does. It's another example of the opportunities that Google gives you and that you should take advantage of where you can remove elements of doubt and you mm -hmm. can actually help them figure out, oh, that's definitely the author tag when I see that in that spot. Um, it's a fascinating thing to me, which is 
as powerful as what uh, Google does really is, uh, both Google and Bing really, um, that um, they, they really have so much that they need help with. And they would so dearly love to not need the, the help of publishers to figure everything out. But the reality is that they very much do. And uh, taking advantage of those opportunities uh, will help you in different ways down the line. And that kind of is a good intro to schema in general. And we promised to talk a little bit about that. And yes. we're, we're in the home stretch of the show. So we ought to talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, uh, back, back at the dawn of time, uh, we had uh, meta keywords tags and meta descriptions, uh, and uh, which we uh, traded and as we, we huddled around our campfires in the dark of the night in our caves. We traded those right. back and forth. Um, and then we uh, and we chiseled our content into the stone and made sure to to use keywords. Except I think they called them rock words back then. Um, uh, and uh, you know that's kind of what you had and. And, but the, the meta keywords and the meta description were the tools that the search engines had to allow publishers to communicate with them about the content of a page. But of course, the spammers arrived and they you know, figured out uh, um, how these things work and they started abusing them. And so that's what made the meta keywords uh, go the, uh, uh, the way of uh, the woolly mammoth. Um, and uh, you know, effectively become extinct or at least useless, not truly extinct. But uh, because I'm sure Ammon Johns is going to note if I don't remember to note it, uh, that they actually have resurrected them for use in Google News. But put that aside for the moment. Uh, there, Ammon, I saved you from typing a comment. Um, um, uh, but. Uh, um, uh, see, I'm treating him like my heckler now. I don't know why I'm doing that. I actually think he puts in great comments that I feel. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's my day to heckle you back, uh, Ammon, so I'll just, just know that. But um, the point is that those things went by the wayside, but it actually was still very important for search engines to get help. And schema is, you know, a big part of... Uh, um, of, of what they rely on or ask how they ask us to help them these days. Yeah, it's just, uh, and at a, you know, at a simple level for folks, uh, schema just simply means it's a method of marking up, uh, tagging different items on your site that identify for Google, you know, point and say like, you know, this is an author, uh, this is a title, you know, this is an article, this is a graphic, this is, you know, all different ways of saying like this is what this is you know this is this is a name and address this is a location uh, that, that just helps Google or, or helps uh, many search engines to uh, better identify that information and make use of it. Yeah, and in fact, if you go to schema.org, you can see a long list of all the things that have been defined there, and you know overall these are a standard that uh, that the search engines have collectively agreed on. Uh, oh. Although we should we should caution that just because it's in schema.org doesn't mean a search engine is using it. Uh, you know, people can contribute anything there, but yeah. Like I was saying. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, no, I'm I'm yeah. just giving you a hard time. Yes, totally agree. That was my I, uh, my 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 Eric Enga don't show quiz and act failed again. I, you know, people saw my lips moving. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So, um, but Mark's exactly right. Uh, um, they don't use everything there. Those standards have been agreed upon, uh, but they're not all used. But they're using more and more of them over time, right? Uh, and uh, but Mark's note it really brings a good caution here. You could spend an inordinate amount of time implementing all aspects of schema and not get short-term value out of that. You need to have some um, uh, balance in that, and you have to. Uh, certainly, it's not that hard to actually do the research and online just through search queries and find out what elements of schema they are using now, uh, and uh, uh, you know, bring bring out those and concentrate on those for now. Um, uh, we know they use name, address, phone number, and organization type information. Uh, of course, we have rel author, which is its own kind of markup. Um, 
Uh, let's see, we know they use recipe type information. Um, what else do they use, Mark? To, um, we can um, the basic article markup. They're using to a certain yeah. degree. We already talked about that. Yeah, some of the some of the content type uh, uh, schema. Uh, the you know, I don't remember the exact tags, but I'm rusty on it. But the uh, things that, as I said earlier, that indicate uh, address, you know, location, phone number, uh, that that's you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, schema is a, a is a great area to get invested in. If you haven't uh, been looking at that on your website, you really should. Um, also, uh, this is actually something that I recall uh, people were saying was related to um, article markup that was important, which was specifying your organization logo, right? Uh, and there's, there's a markup for that, um, yeah. mm -hmm. which is part of the organization schema and is a sub-tag to that um, so that you can indicate to Google uh, if they choose to show your logo in the search results, which they might over on the right, right, uh, when you do a search on your brand name, um, you know, what logo file they should use for that. So yeah, Matt, uh, Matt Kutch just did a video on that last week. Uh, they called that to our attention, so you can probably find that online. Yes, indeed. I'm going to see if I can find a quick example. So I have a quick example. Yeah. This is going to be cool. There we go. So right there, you see schema organization logo markup is responsible for that little image showing up in the, uh, uh, the, the little knowledge panel for us over here on the right. So we got, to, we got to pick that out due to the fact that we implemented schema and told Google what image file to use. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then the other data is also from there, which reminds me I have to update it because uh, it's incorrect. <laughs> it's kind of it's a ma oh it is yeah it's a mashup of uh, uh, of the schema data from our site with the uh, our brand page uh, as you can see there because it shows our followers which we just crossed three thousand two days ago followers on the Google on the uh, something right there so raw um, and uh, and as you show it you know it typically shows your most recent Google Plus Post as well. So see how they mash together data for that uh, that knowledge panel result. Absolutely. Okay. So um, I have one uh, question from earlier. I want to pull out now, uh, and that's from Jeremy Sh uh, Schooley. I think it probably is. Yep. Uh, I read that a personal Google Plus account can gain authority, boosting its author rank from writing and posting high quality articles on authority sites and linking to the profile. Does the same concept apply to Google Plus publisher brand profiles? Can linking to it from multiple quality sites give the brand profile an authority boost? Okay, so there's a little bit of apples and oranges in there, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, so um, the, the, the first part, which I'm going to toss your way, Mark, and then maybe I can take the second part, um, is uh, the, just the assertion that starts that a uh, personal Google Plus account can gain authority by boosting its author rank from writing and posting high quality articles on authority sites and linking to the profile. Why don't you take that part? Yeah, the answer to that is that it's not author rank specifically. Uh, not in what we've been meaning by author rank when we talk about that. What we're really talking about here is, is profile rank, which is not the same thing. Um, it's the it, because profiles and pages, brand pages, have varying degrees of authority uh, on Google Plus that affects uh, their amount of influence within Google Plus and extends their influence out into Google Search. Now that's the that's their influence when when they post. And uh, you know maybe I'm going to encroach on the answer you were going to give, Eric. But you know uh, I, I wrote uh, a Search Engine Land article you know extensively showing this last year. That uh, the that external links, links from the web to your profile or to your page, do help build the authority of that profile or page. But it's not the same thing as author rank, because author rank would mean that then, like if I have a high profile Google Plus profile, it would mean 
that uh, that anything that I write on the web uh, would automatically rank higher, and that's not the case. Uh, but it does mean, because I do have a pretty high authority profile, that my Google Plus posts, the things I post on Google Plus, and the things that I plus one and recommend um, will often show up in search and show up higher in search than other people's, and particularly have a strong influence into personalized search of people who have me in their Google network. Right. Yeah. Yes, I agree. I mean, the getting getting links to your, uh, be it your profile or your brand page. Um, I'm not going to say however you do it because I don't really mean however you do it. <laughs> uh, um, uh, but it, 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 in any sort of reasonably organically obtained links, like because you write an article on some site uh, and that site's a really high authority site that people really respect and if it contains links back to your, uh, your page, be it a profile or a brand page, then yes, in some way that's going to help you. Um, um, but I don't think it specifically, as you said, feeds the uh, author rank. Yeah, and that's, you know, and again, authorship, one of the things that I mentioned in that study, uh, and I'll put the link up to it um, after, after the show into the uh, event page comments, but was that it, it makes sense that uh, when you use Google authorship, that authorship link, it requires a link back to your profile, and that has to be a followed link. We know that since December, that if, it, if, they, if a site no follows the authorship ranks, uh, the rel equals author ranks, it appears to break uh, the authorship link. So that's a followed link that's going to pass an authority to your to your profile. Yeah. So we're we're at the end of the show here, Mr. Traphagen. So uh, any any closing uh, thoughts? Uh, well, this is you know great sh great show. I you know this is one that. Uh, I got a little bit of jitters like an hour before the show thinking like, are we really going to get any questions about this? Are there going to be enough questions? And we've had more than enough. We didn't get to all of them, uh, which as we always say and we always try to fulfill, um, you know, we will come back in after the show and try to catch any questions in text form or answer in text form any that we didn't get to here in the live show. Uh, and as always, I'm doing my job as the online marketing director for Stone Temple Consulting. Eric, what do we got on tap for Thursday? For the <laughs> yes, you Eric, you Eric Inga. Yes, um, I'm, the, I'm actually very excited about this one. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, as I, I said in the show title, we get to get the inside scoop on plus post ads. We will be joined by Christian Ashlock from, from the Google Plus team. Uh, he's the product manager for plus post ads. Uh, we're going to get some uh, uh, some feedback on how they're viewing the program and where it's going and how, how it's going and all those kinds of things. The show is at a non-standard time in order to fit his schedule. It will be at 4 Eastern time on Thursday of this week. So that would be Thursday the 31st of April, otherwise known as the 1st of May. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, hope you can join us at the show. Uh, with that, uh, that's it for... Uh, the Digital Marketing Answers show uh, for today. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.